FBG Duck's murder shocked the rap game back in 2020, but nobody was expecting the trial to get even crazier. From family members bringing knives to court, to other murders getting solved over the case, today we're breaking down all the wild things happening inside the courtroom so far. In August 2020, Duck was shopping in the Gold Coast neighborhood of Chicago. It's one of the richest parts of the city and doesn't have much violence. But that didn't stop four O-Block shooters from allegedly rolling up and letting off almost 40 shots in just a few seconds. Duck was left bleeding out in the street after catching 16 bullets, and the cops just stood around while he slowly died. Duck had been beefing with the BDs for years, and most people thought O-Block was responsible from the jump. Murders go unsolved in Chicago all the time, but since Duck got killed in a nice area of the city in broad day, the cops took the case way more seriously and even the feds got involved. They ended up bringing down a federal RICO case against O-Block and indicted C-Thang, C-Murder, Moop, Los, Zell Money, and TZ for Duck's murder. Now three years later, the RICO is finally going to trial, and it's been a wild case from the start. Duck's mom has already been kicked out of the courtroom three times. The first time happened after they found a quarter ounce of weed on her, then she got into a fight with one of the defendant's moms. And the third time, they had to ask her to leave after she lost control while they were playing footage of Duck's murder and autopsy in the courtroom. She's not the only family who's been kicked out of the court, though. See, murder sister was found holding a box knife. Carrying a weapon in the courthouse is a big deal, but it turns out that she had a knife for her job and didn't catch a charge over it. Even members of the media are getting kicked out of the trial. A blogger named Mickey Truth was at the trial and reporting on what was going on behind closed doors since cameras aren't allowed during federal cases. But then she started capping about someone's testimony and caused some major issues. FBG Butter was close with Duck and got brought in to testify. After he took the stand, Mickey Truth told her followers that he was paid by the feds to testify, which turned out to be a complete lie. She said that either Butter or his mom got $2,700 to work with the cops, but none of that was true. Mickey Truth posted a correction later after Butter's mom hit her up, but Butter got super pressed about it and at one point tried to run out of the room where he was being held. The court was still going to let Mickey Truth watch the trial from a different room, but she decided to dip out of Chicago after the feds warned her that she was playing with some dangerous people. A month before Mickey Truth started causing issues, an FBI special agent named Kevin Doyle testified that the feds only searched the cell phone records from three of the alleged shooters because they were worried about keeping witnesses safe. Doyle told the court, there has been retaliation against witnesses in the past associated with this group. He didn't actually name the crew he was talking about, but everyone believes he was talking about O-Block killing witnesses if they found out who was talking. After he testified, some of the defense lawyers called for a mistrial because they thought Doyle made the trial unfair. Since this is a federal RICO case, the prosecution has to prove that O-Block is actually a criminal enterprise if they want to convict the shooters of murder and furtherance of racketeering instead of it just being a normal murder. The judge said it wasn't enough to call for a mistrial, but the defense team tried again after Mickey Truth got tossed out of the courtroom. They said that Mickey getting kicked out violated her freedom of speech and the defendant's right to a public trial. It was a pretty weak argument, though, and the judge decided to let the trial keep going. The feds have a 96% conviction rate in RICO cases, and the situation isn't looking good for the dudes from O-Block. So it makes sense that the lawyers will do whatever it takes to stop the trial. When the news first broke that O-Block was getting hit with the RICO, some people thought they'd beat the case. But that was before this next shocking evidence was revealed. The war in Chicago that eventually got Duck killed really kicked off around 2011, when a GD from Duck's set, SCLEBT, named Tuka was shot and killed at a bus stop. Rumors said that a BD named Odie Perry was involved with the hit, and less than a year later, he was shot and killed while he was riding his bike down the street. Old Block was known as Wick City back then, but OD was so well respected that the hood changed his name in honor of him. Nobody was ever booked for killing him. But the most popular rumor is that FBG Butter and a girl who repped the GDs and KI were involved with the shooting. They allegedly went sliding on the ops on Tuka's birthday and called OD by himself. And reports said that Butter confirmed the stories during his testimony. After allegedly killing OD, KI became one of the most hated ops for Oblock. She was allegedly putting major pressure on him in the streets, but at the same time, she had a weird relationship with King Von. Von and some other BDs allegedly beat her up on a train and clowned her over the situation on Twitter. Then KI clapped back and said her 40 cow put a hole in their faces. They started sending death threats back and forth, but on the same day, KI tweeted, retweet if you think I look good, and Von immediately retweeted it. They flirted back and forth like crazy on Twitter while they were both going after each other's homies in the street. Then a few years later, someone leaked their alleged DMs that showed Vaughn trying to hook up with KI and getting curved. King Vaughn allegedly killed a GD from Draw City named P5 with J Money, Big A, LA Capone, and Manny. They allegedly ambushed him while he was trying to pick up some weight and brutally executed him with six shots into his face. Vaughn got picked up on a different charge right after it went down and KI couldn't get back at him, so she allegedly killed J Money instead. KI even clowned Vaughn over losing J Money, and that's when Vaughn allegedly went from wanting to hook up with her to wanting to kill her. 
but before KI died, she allegedly took out another BD who was related to Chief Keef. Love Money was Chief Keef's cousin and allegedly wasn't even active in the streets. She allegedly slid on him and shot him in the chest. Then just a day later, KI was dead. On April 11th, 2014, KI and FBG Butter were going to their homie Wooski's place when the shooter walked up and started letting off shots. Butta got hit in the leg and survived, but KI was shot at least six times and passed away a few hours later. Vaughn was a suspected shooter for a long time, and a dude from O Block named Jay Hood told Cam Capone News that Vaughn claimed he took a route right after it went down. Vaughn was brought in for questioning over the murder, but the cops didn't have enough evidence to book him. Most people still believe Vaughn pulled the trigger though, and on the track War With Us, he even rapped, knock all that meat out your fucking taco, hollow tips spinning like cyclones, FaceTime a nigga like iPhone, put a pretty op in the more. Call that drop that gorgeous. Damn, I'm heartless. But you can call me the Tin Man. FBG Butter claimed that Vaughn wasn't the shooter though. Vaughn didn't kill Kai. Period. That and I ain't saying that because Vaughn didn't kill Kai. Oh, took I, I got shot too. I was right there. I got shot too. I saw the motherfucker who popped us. He did. And it was some grown niggas. It aced you. That shit a facade, but you gotta think about it though. Vaughn took credit for a lot of murders in real life. There were other people who thought AC was involved, and Vaughn allegedly rapped about the two of them taking KI out on the track weight when he rapped. I was sliding with Big A. We was riding down the tray. I hit the alley, told bro, wait, you know King Vaughn do his thing. I hopped out, no, I don't play. Now I'm Beretta on my waist. I count the crowd, didn't hesitate. For years, nobody knew who really took KI out. But during FBG Duck's murder trial, Butter took the stand and finally told everyone who pulled the trigger. We don't have video of Butter's testimony since it's a Fed trial, but he told the courtroom that King Vaughn was the one who killed KI. Butter's the only witness from what went down that day, and he told Cam Capone News that he only told them about Vaughn killing her because Vaughn is dead now. Butter caught a lot of heat for taking the stand, but he said he was just doing what he had to do and that nobody was getting jammed up over what he told the court. Butter said the reason he never told anyone that Vaughn was a shooter back in the day is because Butter wanted to kill Vaughn himself instead of getting them locked up. Butter said they all know what comes with the street life, and the ops weren't doing anything to them that they couldn't do back. Butter confirming that Vaughn killed KI was crazy, but another testimony in the duck trial was even more shocking. Trenches News has been posting videos about the war in Chicago for years and always claimed to know a lot of the dudes involved on both sides because he lived in the area. Nobody knew who he was though because he always wears a face mask in his videos to protect his identity. A couple weeks after the trial started, rumors were flying that Trenches News was going to testify on the trial, but in an interview with No Jumper, he made it sound like it was all cap and said that he's not part of nothing. Then the news broke that Trenches really was taking the stand, but nobody was expecting what happened next. Trenches didn't just testify about O Block and the GDs. It turns out he's been a paid informant with the FBI for almost a decade. They revealed his real name and he used to live in O Block back in the day. During his testimony, Trenches News identified some of the O Block dudes in the surveillance footage from Duck's murder and made jokes about him being the Michael Jordan of YouTube. He told the court that he was a BD who lived in O Block back in the day, but he ended up switching sides around 2010 when he had some internal drama over there and got shot. After he started rocking with the GDs, he got tight with Duck, and right after he was killed, Trenches News reached out to the cops and offered to help him with the investigation. He said that he doesn't gangbang anymore and uses his YouTube channel to keep kids from going down the same path he did. But during the same testimony, he talks about the first time he shot an op in the street and calls it a rush. The FBI special agent, Kevin Doyle, testified that the feds had paid Trenches News around 25k for his help. He said that Trenches would provide background information, review surveillance footage, and social media posts. According to Trenches News, he became an informant all the way back in 2006 after he was arrested by a corrupt Chicago cop named Ronald Watts. Watts was a notorious cop in the streets who was known for shaking down drug dealers and taking bribes. Anyone who didn't pay up would get arrested, and the situation got so wild that the FBI, ATF, and local cops all got involved with the investigation. In 2011, a homeless dude told Watts and another cop that he was moving cash for a drug dealer that day. They ended up robbing him for $5,200. But what they didn't know is that the homeless guy was actually a federal informant who was being used to set him up. Watts ended up pleading guilty in 2013, and the city of Chicago had to throw out over 200 convictions that Officer Watts had been involved with. According to Trenches News, Officer Watts booked him in 2006 and said, he asked me, did I want to go to jail or did I want my money? I said, I'll go to jail. He took me to jail. I got up with the feds as soon as I got out. What was weird about the situation though, is that Trenches News said he didn't remember working with the FBI in 2008, 2011, even though the lawyer showed paperwork proving he was cooperating with them back then. 
According to Trench's news, though, his memory is all messed up because he got shot in the head back in 2004 and it's still affecting him. A big part of this whole case is the prosecution proving that O-Block is a gang and that the six zoos they indicted killed Duck for the proof. And according to them, this is why Duck became their biggest op and King Von allegedly put a bag on his head. Duck came up repping the STL EBT set of the GDs because his older brother Brick was already affiliated with them. Brick had a reputation in the streets, but Duck made his own lane and became known for throwing hands with the Ops and allegedly never lost a fight. Duck was really tight with Tuka, who was allegedly killed by Odie Perry from Wick City. After Tuka's death, a lot of his homies started repping Tukaville, and Duck always kept Tuka's name alive in his raps. Trench's news claimed that after Duck and his homies like Billionaire Black and King Yella decided to hop in the booth, he's the one who helped get everything started. Around that same time, the BDs in Chicago were really taking over the rap game after Chief Keith blew up off the track I Don't Like. Lil Reese and Dirk were popping off too, and Trench's news claims they were trying to get Duck and his homies black balls in the industry. Duck still got some shine in the drill scene, but at the same time, he never really left the streets. Back in 2013, someone caught him outside a liquor store and started letting off shots, but Duck only got hit once in the leg and made it out alive. He had been shot before that in the ankle too, but Duck told DJ Flat that he was never going to leave Chicago because he knew how to move safely and how to take care of all of his people. Unfortunately, Duck took another massive loss in 2017 after his brother FBG Brick and his cousin Kobe Mack were both killed in a drive-by shooting. Duck kept it pushing in the rap game though and finally popped off with the track slide, but his losses in the street kept coming. Duck's homie Dooski the man got shot and killed. Then at his funeral, Duck's friend Wooski was shot in the head after the ops slipped through busting off shots at the church. Rumors say King Von was behind the plan to catch him at the funeral. And on the track back again, Von raps, at your funeral, I might just slide. Rest in peace. Shot up everybody that's outside. Bet Wooski feel this one. I bet Wooski's still twitching. He changed, something different. Then Von and Mimo 600 dropped the track exposing me and Von took shots at Tsuka with the line, Yo homie died, I'm smoking that. I'm tired of smelling Tsuka and Lil Mark, and I'm tired of scrap. Duck and his homie Ruga clapped back with the remix of the track, and Duck clowned a bunch of Von's dead homies when he raps. He got caught in traffic, Wilds ain't get to finish his status. He on the internet laughing, capping, then got caught without it. Yo homie he dead, you heard what I said. Sheroid, D-Thing, and Tirehead. He also clowned Mimo's brother Lil Steve, who had been shot and killed and rapped. These n****s mentioned in Tuka, I'll fuck around, send you to meet him. I don't got my Glock, when I see an op, on bro, I'ma beat him. I'm smoking Lil Steve, can't breathe, thinking it's over. I wish I was right there when Lil Boo got slumped, I would have ran it over. Then a month before he was killed, Doug took more shots at Vaughn's homies on the track dead b and rapped. Made Chicago legends, shit, that was just about business. Said I wasn't gonna diss the dead, and okay, I did it. But n T. Roy and OD, them dead b According to the prosecutors, someone in O-Block put a 50k bounty on Duck's head, then raised it to 100k. Most people believe it was Von who put the hit out on Duck, and after his murder went down, Von allegedly spent over 100k on O-Block chains for the homie. Von's homie Lil Dirk also confirmed that Duck was one of their biggest ops. He's still taking shots at him even after he died, like on the track should have Duck's when he rapped, you come outside without your gun, you dumb as f Ain't no quick run to the store, they pop out, fire you up. I told my PO through the gate that I get high as f She asked me how high do I get, I told her high as duck. King Von was killed just a couple months later. But now the dudes he allegedly paid to murder duck are facing one of the wildest trials in the rap game. It's already been crazy and the case just started. So tap in for updates for more news drops.